Good morning. It is a good morning. It's December the 9th of 2016. Good morning, Willie Shorter. Good to see you on with us today. We're here doing our one-year Bible study. Just about to finish up. December the 9th means we have 22 more days until the end of the year. That means we've read all the way through the Bible in a year. I keep emphasizing that as preparation for 2017. For those of you that just joined us, we read all the way through the Bible, front cover to back cover, in a year's time. And it's wonderful. Um, it's life-changing. <laughs> We're getting to know our Father God more and more. So uh, December the 9th, we get to start two new chapters. We're going to <clears throat> start out in Joel in the Old Testament reading today. In the New Testament reading, we'll be starting Revelation. And then we always have a um, Psalms and a Proverb that goes along with it. But Joel is one of the lesser known um, prophets, but his name... Um, his name means um, revealer of God, I believe, if I remember right. I may have to double check that, but it's a powerful name, Joel, revealer of God. And he is a prophet. And um, while this is a short chapter in the Bible, a short book in the Bible, it's a powerful book in the Bible. Um, in fact, I see my friend Joel Chapman is on today and... Um, I, I thought of him when I read the book of Joel this morning, when I read our chapters. We're reading the first three chapters in Joel, um, especially when I read about what the name of Joel means. So happy to have you with us. But <clears throat> um, Okay, let's get started. Uh, again, this book is, is one of the shorter books. It's one of the less known uh, books, and yet a lot of the words that's written here are words that we share on a regular basis. So I want to move over to chapter, I believe it's chapter 2 and verse 12. I want to share some things from it. Um, and it's so cool today um, in doing what I'm doing. I, I want to read the Proverbs first. Proverbs 29.18 is our Proverbs for the day. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. And here we are reading in um, a, a prophetic book of our Bible. We're reading in it. So it says, where there is no product, pro prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. So we know there's blessings in this. And then um, also um, in the book of Revelation today, it, it tells us that when we read these prophecies out loud, um, that we're blessed. So by that, and because of that, I'm going to read a few, a little bit of this out loud to you because you will be blessed by the word of God being read over you. Yet even now, declares the Lord, Joel chapter 2, verse 12, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. It's always been God's heart to have you turn back towards him, regardless of how far away from him you've gotten. It's always been his heart to have oneness with you, to have intimacy with you, to have relationship with you. And rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a green offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. So he's a merciful God. He's full of mercy and he's slow to anger. Th these are words for those of you who think that you've sinned so much that God doesn't have time for you, or that he will not accept you back or, or that you've just, you've just drifted too far away from him. Um, this is contrary to that. That is a lie from the pits of hell. It's a lie the world will tell you. God, this is Old Testament reading. Way back in the Old Testament, before he sent Jesus Christ, he longed for you. He wanted relationship with you. Um, he wanted communion with you. He wanted to abide in you and you to abide in him. And then I'm going to skip over then to um, verse 
24 and you'll recognize a lot of these scriptures because it, the, the, it's, it's words that we use a lot um, in our life. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. That is a promise that, that bad things happen. Bad things go on. Um, the enemy comes and to kill, steal, and destroy. Um, we allow the enemy at times to have uh, success in our life that, that the enemy never should have, access to our life that he never should have. But even when that happens, here's our promise that God speaks. God is speaking to us. I will restore to you the years that the swarming, swarming locust has eaten. Wow, what a promise that we have. What a promise. <clears throat> the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Those of you that are worrying about how to get through Christmas, those of you that are worrying how to get through this new year coming up, listen to these promises. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of you and that I am the Lord your God and there is none else and my people shall never again be put to shame. Those are promises you stand on during hard times. That's why we read every single day. I woke up December the 9th, 2016, and these are the words from my father. He's telling me, Elizabeth, you'll eat plenty and be satisfied. Elizabeth, um, you'll never again be put to shame. Elizabeth, you can know that I'm with you. I'm amongst you. Elizabeth, please know that I'm your Lord, uh, the Lord your God, and there is no one but me. Those are promises. Make it personal for you. Read your name in these scriptures. He's speaking to you. This is his love letter to you so that you can get through the hard times. And then here's a promise about our relationship with him, about what happened when he did send Jesus Christ for us, because that's what these prophecies are about. And now this is a promise for us today spiritually. And it shall come to pass afterwards, after Jesus Christ, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You got a wayward son, a wayward daughter? Here's your promise. Here's your promise. But guess who else is sons and daughters? That's me. That's you. Today. We shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. I saw a vision uh, just about 10 days ago that was a promise from God. All, all I did is I was listening to the Word of God um, through an audio uh, transmission, and I leaned back and I closed my eyes, and immediately I had this vision. Immediately. I mean, it was instantaneously, and I knew it was a promise of God for the glory that was coming. Um, Wow, we get to have him communicate to us that way. It's a promise. It's a promise in his word. Um, so that's the book of Joel. And then here we are in Revelation. We're going to spend from now until the end of the year finishing up reading uh, the book of Revelation. We'll finish the last part of this, of this word of God, reading it cover to cover. And I want you to really, really, really allow God and ask God, to speak to your heart in this book of Revelation. And I want to point out a few things right here in the beginning, that if you keep this in mind as you move forward, I believe the book of Revelation will be an easier read than it's ever been for you before. And I'm claiming that for me. I'm claiming that. So in Revelation chapter 1, it starts right off telling you what it is. Right off, black and white. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that most, must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed, now listen to this, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it. For the time is near. 
blessed. Blessed are the ones that read this. You're blessed because you're reading this. Um, and then skip down to verse 7. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. Well, how often do we have clouds? Yes, indeed, we have prophecies for the future. Yes, indeed, we do. But this is the future. This was written 70 A.D., 70 years after Christ uh, was crucified. At 70 after death, 70 years after death. This is the future. And it says right here, behold, he is coming with the clouds. Well, how often do we have clouds? I don't have to wait on Jesus Christ. He's already came. He's already died. He's already sent the comforter. And his spirit lives inside of me and abides in me. Abides in me. Jesus Christ is present day. He's already came. And when my spiritual eyes are opened, I know that he came on the clouds for me. And I can see that he lives in me. I can see that he lives in you. One of my favorite, favorite mentors in, in the God, Word of God is on here with me today, Joanne Montfort. She is full of him. She is full of him. I can't help but when I see her, I see him. My spiritual eyes are open. And if you know this woman of God, you know him. I, that's the way it works. Mick Skubanek is on. He's a powerful man of God. When I see him, I see him. When I see Mick, I see God in him. He lives. He is alive. What sets us apart from any other religion on the face of the earth is that the living God, is he's alive. He's not dead. We don't worship a dead man. The living God lives on the inside of us. And as he is, the Bible says, so are we in this world. It's a different way to read these when you allow God to be real in your life right now, today. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God. Verse 8. Who is and who was and who is to come. That's how we should read this book of Revelation. It is who is. So he tells John, he tells John to turn. We're going to read this in a minute. To turn and look back. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, verse 1. Who is, who was, that's who's behind us, and who is to come. God, there is no timeline with God. There is no beginning. There's no end. There's no in between. He is. He is the great I am. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the uh, patient endurance that are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches. So, so that's why I encourage you to journal, write what you see. Write what you hear. Write what you're going through. Write down so that you'll have witness of it for when you're really, really needing it. It's the reason why God wrote it all down for us. The same reason we need to be writing down our relationship with him. And then verse 12, then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. He turned. It's powerful changes the way you see the book of Revelation when you see it that way. The voice that was speaking to me, and I'm turning. I saw the seven golden lamps. I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 17. Um, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But don't tell me that you can't be slain in the Spirit. It's all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible, from front cover to back cover. It's not just limited to New Testament. Um, but he laid his right hand on me saying, fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. Okay. What does Hades represent? What does Hades mean? What does death mean? Death means in this particular case, especially it's capitalized means separation from God. Hades means hell. Who holds the key? Who holds the key to that? Jesus Christ holds the key. He has the key to death. He has the key to hell. We have nothing to fear. 
nothing to fear. He would not tell us fear not if it wasn't possible for us to live a life without fear. We fear the unknown. We fear that which we don't understand. But when we read this word, we understand. We understand who holds the key. Who, we understand that the prince of this world was destroyed at the cross of Jesus Christ, that we get to live in victory. We're overcomers. We don't have to be subject to fear and, and unbelief. We don't have to. I mean, the whole reason why Jesus Christ was born as a baby and we separate, we celebrate Jesus Christ is because it activates our faith. I'm going to talk about that today in my Tis the Season. It activates the measure of faith. We've already been given the amount of faith that we have to have. God measured it out, and he gave you your portion, he gave me my portion, he doesn't make mistakes. We don't have fear because of a lack of faith. We have fear because of unbelief, and we feed our unbelief on a regular basis instead of feeding our faith. Every time I open up this book and I read, I'm feeding my faith. I'm getting stronger in my faith, the measure of faith of God. We have the same faith inside of us that Jesus Christ had walking this earth. That's how much faith we have. Is it enough faith? You bet it's enough faith. You bet it is. If it's not enough faith, then, then God made a mistake because he measured it. And he doesn't make mistakes. Quit feeding your unbelief. Quit feeding unbelief. <clears throat> there is no faith problem. It's an unbelief problem. Uh, Psalms 128. <clears throat> Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. So ladies that are married that's on here, you will be a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. That's the only fear we should have is the fear of the Lord. Not fear about what tomorrow holds. Not fear that my checkbook doesn't look like it should. Not fear about what's going to happen in the economy and who will lose their jobs. We only fear the Lord. And we have faith because he gave us the faith. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. Don't tell me God doesn't want us to prosper. There's, it's, too, it's written too many times. Don't, don't tell me. I'm not supposed to prosper. But don't tell me prosperity only has to do with finances either. That's baloney. Prosperity is the all-encompassing favor of God in my life. And it starts first and foremost with the belief that he is who he says he is, that I am who he says I am, that he holds the keys. That's where it starts. Prosperity starts with peace of mind. Prosperity stops with a calmness in the midst of the storm. And then way down the list is my finances and the way that I live my life. But don't tell me God doesn't want us to prosper. It's written down way too many times. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. All. May, your, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. What a Christmas blessing this December the 9th. 2016. It's the words in this book that blesses my heart, that feeds my faith, that allows me to rise up as an overcomer, and I can overcome, and I can see the hope, and I know that I know that I know the best is yet to come, and that's why we read, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why you join me on these telecons at 830 in the morning. We'll talk again next Monday. Love you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.